Scripture I would like to read together this morning is from Psalm chapter 34. If you would uh, read with me on this, it says, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. O fear the Lord, you his saints. For those who fear him have no lack. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Jericho, would you mind coming up here for a second? Didn't ask him before, so he's going to be brave. I just wanted to do a little something. If you could come up here and stand right next to me. Does anyone know what city this is? Take a guess. This is Jericho. Yeah, I thought that would be fun. That's all. <laughs> That's all. I just thought that would be fun. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the story of Jericho, one of the best-known stories in the Bible, where the children of Israel have left Egypt they have come through, uh, spent 40 years in the desert, and now they are crossing into the promised land. Finally, Moses has died, and God has made promises and told him to go boldly into this promised land. And Jericho is a very strongly established city that has been there for potentially a thousand years prior to this. Jericho is a very ancient city, okay? Um, so we know the story that the children of Israel cross in, they send spies in, and... This story is incredibly rich, incredibly rich. In fact, we are going to spend several weeks on this story, and we're going to look at some details of this story and how they apply to life today, and it's going to be really good. Okay, a couple of more pictures. This is the land of Israel. If you're not familiar with where this is on the map, you're looking at the Dead Sea, and here's Jerusalem. I, don't know, I can't get my laser on there, maybe. There's Jerusalem right there. The city of Jericho is right here. It's just slightly northeast of Jerusalem. Jericho is inside the land of Israel. Okay, So this was part of the land that God promised to Abraham and where they went. This is, zooming in a little bit closer on Google Earth, this is what Jericho looks like today. Okay, And right there are the ruins of the ancient city of Jericho. This is where the walls actually fell, right there. That kind of oblong shape is the actual ruins of the city of Jericho. That's what they look like from uh, Cessna. And this is probably something like what it looked like at the time the children of Israel showed up. Um, a lot of people believe that there was actually a lower wall down here as well. But what you find if you do some research online, this is one of those stories that... Um, the general public, especially people who want to discount uh, the Bible and its accuracy, will say, this never happened. <clears throat> this is a story, I mean, please. The story is the children of Israel go in, God tells them, walk around the city of Jericho once for six days, and on the seventh day, walk around the city seven times, and on the seventh time around, give a blast of the trumpets and a shout, and the walls will fall. When you look at archaeological data on this, you'll see the construction of the wall and that these walls actually fell. The way they were built, there's a lot of science in it, and there have been groups that have gone to study it and said, we didn't find anything. And then subsequent groups go in and they say they uncovered amazing things they didn't even realize what it was they uncovered. And this, this place actually, this happened. And it's another one of the stories that kind of reminds us that we are walking on the same dirt on the same planet where these things happened. These are not a, a random house book of fairy tales that we learn from. These things factually happened. This city existed. I think one of, the, one of the amazing things about Jericho as a story and as a city and the details of Jericho <clears throat> is that there is in this story what many people refer to as a scarlet thread. The scarlet thread, if you've ever heard that term, is basically alluding to, as you read through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, you're going to find what's referred to as a scarlet thread. And what that means is that in every story, there is a finger pointing toward a Savior coming and the redemption of mankind. In stories where Adam and Eve fall, and sin comes into the world, and work and toil come into the world, and thorns and thistles and death come into the world. Even in that situation, you'll find that God sheds blood to cover their shame, and you have the beginning of a scarlet thread. And when you get to the children of Israel in Egypt, and God delivers them, and they put the blood of a spotless lamb on the lentil and doorpost, you see a scarlet thread. 
<clears throat> everywhere you go, you'll see this as part of the story. And Jericho is actually where this term comes from. In part of the story, there's a character who, when Jericho falls, has a scarlet thread hanging from the window of her home, and her family is saved. And that's where the term scarlet thread comes from. I'd like to switch gears just for a minute here. What is this? This is not tasty. Okay, this technically, this is a hamburger. Okay, what you can't, yeah, it says July 2nd, 09. Now, what you can't know just looking at the picture is that this picture was not taken on July 2nd of 09. This picture was actually taken in 2014 of a burger that was purchased in July of 2009 and not frozen. Okay, this is what the burger looks like five years later. It probably has enough preservatives in it that you could eat it and you might get sick, but you probably wouldn't die. It may have some nutritional value. Now, this is not something I would pick up and eat now. If I was starving in the desert and I was going to die, I would give it a thought, probably. This is a cheeseburger. It's progress. It's some progress that, I mean, I would probably qualify this as a cheeseburger. Not what I would go out looking to purchase, probably, but we're, we're making a little bit of progress. This, now this, I would pay money probably for this. This looks really good. I think the sizzling pan and the melting cheese and stuff really helps the pitcher. And I'm sorry if you didn't have breakfast. I really apologize. If you're hungry, I apologize. It's going to get worse. I love this logo, okay? I am a burger person. I love burgers. Recently, we went, uh, Sarah and I got a chance to go out, and we had dinner with uh, Dave and Paula, and I got a burger because I am a burger person, and it was awesome. Now, when you go here, this isn't two slices of bread with a burger. This is a burger, okay? This is my burger that I buy on the odd occasion that I find myself at Red Robin. This is called a Whiskey River, and I can't drink whiskey because I'm a pastor, but I do eat this burger, okay? This burger has onion straws on the bottom. Oh. I might have to end early. I love this burger. Now, what on earth does this all have to do with a story in the Bible? Let me tell you. The story of Jericho may be this, a story you've heard a bunch of times. What's the story of Jericho? Well, children of Israel come in, got to destroy Jericho. Oh, it's just wrong. March around the city. Do, 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 do. Walls fall, big, it's over. Wow. God's amazing. He can do cool things. He can make walls fall. That's your burger. Now you start to, to step back and notice there are some additional details of this. There are some amazingly significant characters in this story that if you don't stop and look, you're going to miss. That's this burger. But if you step back and think about this a little deeper, there are so many more pieces to this puzzle that speak of life today. You have to remember that Jericho, as a challenge, was met by human beings that dealt with the same things, same fears, same issues we did. Sinful, selfish people that want their own way as easy as possible. <clears throat> Just like us. This really happened. And there's so much buried in this story that if we will take our time, this is available to us in this story. But if we're in a hurry to get the story of Jericho over so that we can go on to another story, because obviously we need lots of highlighter and notes in our Bible, and if we spend too much time on Jericho, it ain't going to happen. Highlighter. All right there. Joshua chapter 2. We got some highlighter. That's some more in chapter 6 if it matters to you. I'm telling you, in this story and in other stories, if you will stop... This is there. Or you can just stop at McDonald's and get a cheeseburger with just dry and just go ahead. You'll live. You'll get by. It's food. It'll do something. 
but you're missing this. Let me read a section of scripture for you from 1 Corinthians. It says, Yet among the mature we do not impart wisdom, although we do impart wisdom, although it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away. We impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood for if they had, they would have not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. Who's heard this verse? Who has heard this verse in context of we have no idea what God is preparing for us on the other side of this life? That is true. It's not really what this verse is talking about directly, though. Listen to what else this says. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the, person, except the Spirit of that person, which is in him? So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. And we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him. He is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. This verse is saying that it has not entered into the mind of man the things God has prepared for us. And then it says, because they're not human things. They're not things that we can use and learn as humans to get through this life better. You know why? Because what we look at is, is everything that's here. So this. It's whether or, not, whether or not Loretta's mad at me today or not. We look at that and you're not mad at me, right? Okay, good. I was worried. We look at work, and we look at people, and we look at I'm sick, or I can't pay my bill, and we look at all these tangible things, and all the people who are getting between us and our passion, and we're frustrated, and our view is completely human, right? But this says God has given us a wisdom and an understanding that comes from being given to and going with where his spirit leads and what his spirit impresses on us and shows us. In Romans, it says that this creation is meant to teach us and show us things that we won't see if we just run past it, if we're too busy. It's about so much more than just this. You probably remember last week, we talked about John chapter 3, verse 8, where it says that the Spirit of the Lord, it says the wind blows and you don't know where it's coming from. You don't know where it's going. You can feel it. You can hear it. But you don't know where it's coming from and where it's going. And so is everyone who's led by the Spirit. Is that a human knowledge? No. You don't know where it's coming from. You don't know where it's going. You can hear it. You can sense it. But it's something beyond you. That's how he wants to impact your life and move you and make you into something different that he's intended, but that you'll never be without him. The book of Joshua is where Jericho starts. The story of Jericho it starts in Joshua 2, and then there's a little bit more information in a couple of chapters, and then it picks back up in chapter 6. I want to look at something very specific right here, and this is going to be the beginning of our digging into the story of Jericho. It says, And Joshua the son of Nun sent two men secretly from Shittim as spies, saying, Go view the land, especially Jericho. Jericho may have been the oldest city in the land that Israel was going to go and take. And Joshua knew that if they were going to take this land, they probably needed to know some things about Jericho. Now, would the children of Israel end up taking down Jericho in their own strength? No. In our own lives, are there things we would like to change? Yes. For me, I get overwhelmed by all the details at once. And so my challenge lately has been allowing him to work out things that I can't work out and change. From bills I have to pay to how
how I relate with people. The time I do or don't spend at home and the things that I do in all these different aspects. But my whole life I've tried to change specific things. And lately I've started to just say to him, this is where I really am. This is what I'm really dealing with. And I'm asking you to change this and I'm not going to try to change it myself anymore. If I feel you pushing my heart to stay away from this or to pay attention to that, I will. But I am not going to write my own battle plan and find a way to be bigger and stronger and achieve this thing that for years I have not achieved. I'm going to let him do these things in my life. And i got to tell you, in the past month, things have began to change. Things have started to change in me. I've actually started to stop and breathe. And to... I've probably done more in the past week than I've done in, in six months prior, but I didn't do it out of stress. I did it out of, there's time to accomplish this goal, we're going to go after it. If we don't, there's tomorrow. The one day I ended up, I was going to do a bunch of work here, and I ended up for a couple hours in the afternoon going home and raking leaves with my boys. And I said, God, wherever your spirit takes me today, whatever your plan is for my day, wherever I end up, whatever my hands find to do, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to, enjoy doing that and I'm going to do it with all my might and know that you've placed me where you have because you can't always control where you end up in a day and I did that and it was good it was good and he's doing things and he's paying bills and he's just I want to run and like solve it today I want it all solved today and I'm refusing to do that and I'm giving him an opportunity to do it his way and amazing things are happening so here's the first point in the story of Jericho in your life, have you taken an inventory, a real look at that one thing, just one at a time, that one thing that you know he would like to see different in your life? Maybe the way you treat people. Maybe the way your temper is. Maybe the way you should pay more attention to what you're eating or not eating, whether or not you're exercising, whether or not you're spending quality, good time with your spouse or your kids, or whether or not you're being the employee that Paul says, when you work for your master, for your boss, do it with your heart. Work is unto God and not unto man. God will be your rewarder. Maybe that's where he wants to hit you. But have you stopped and taken an inventory? Have you sent your spies in to say, how big is this wall? What is this really made of? Why am I like that? Why do I do that? And then when you come to identify what's really there, what's behind the wall, you can say, how do you want to do this? How do you want to take this down? How do you want to defeat this Jericho in my life? Again, they didn't do it in their own power, but they were aware of what it is God would have to defeat. Now, I want you to be careful not to mix two things up. This is not the children of Israel going in because they needed to know the details so that God could figure out how to defeat it. I think this is the children of Israel going in and getting an honest look at how big this problem was that God was going to deal with. See, we make the mistake of saying, nah, I can take care of that. I can change that. I can stop doing that. It's not that big a deal. I can, not a big deal. But I think God wants us to step back and say, this really is bigger than what I pretend that it is. This is an attitude problem. This is whatever. I've been reading in Ezekiel lately, and let me just tell you that God is serious about sin. God, it's, he is slow to anger, abounding in loving kindness, and he will take as much time as he can, giving you an opportunity to turn to him. But there's coming a day where he'll deal with it. If you won't give it to him, he'll deal with it himself. And nobody wants to be in that place. He will expose it. If that's the only way, he'll expose it. So lesson one from Jericho. Let's be serious about where our lives are. What's going on? Let's be David in Psalm 139, 23, and 24. Lord, search my heart. Show me what's really there. And then give me the willingness to be led by you. Lead me in your way. 
Lead me like the picture of the dandelion seeds being blown. Wherever it is, what your spirit wants to do in my life, help me to let go and go the path that you're leading me down. And where I find myself, so long as it's not because of a terrible decision I made, wherever I find myself, let me find peace in knowing that you are constructing something in my life that I've been without and will always be without if I don't let go and let you have it. I encourage you to take an inventory. We are going to be talking about Jericho for a couple of weeks. It's in Joshua chapter 2, starting back at 6. Take a chance and read it. Put some highlighter in your Bible. Make some notes, but th start thinking about the details of the story of Jericho and some of the characters. Do a little bit of research on who, this, who some of these people are. This is one of the first major obstacles that the children of Israel had to face when they came into the Promised Land. And the story of just after Jericho. This is loaded Start building the burger this week, and we are going to tear it apart together. All right? Amen. Hi, this is Pastor Dave from Gowanda Assembly of God. I want to thank you for listening to our message here on our Gowanda Assembly of God YouTube channel. Hope to see you here again soon.